Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do a sauce top review. Why the hell not? Yes, yet another sauce top review. Sauce top review with a little bit of a difference. I've had mine for 13 years. I believe the only ones available at a time were this big cabinet saw and one other. A little bit of background. So I started out with a contractor saw, Craftsman contractor saw. That worked out very well. I mounted it in a you know, mobile base that I made out of plywood. That worked out well for years. Then I, then I got a jet, um, what they call a hybrid saw. Looks like a cabinet saw, but it's not quite. I had that for quite a few years as well. And then one day, late in the afternoon, on a hot, muggy, hot, muggy day, <coughs> when we didn't have any air conditioning in the shop, I was doing some work on the table saw. I was, it was a stupid, stupid mistake. We all make them. This is when the stupid mistakes are going to happen. End of the day, working all day, tired, hot, and sweaty. I clipped the tips of my two fingers in that uh, jet cabinet saw in the blade. Didn't go to the bone, just nipped off a little bit of the flesh. Fine, okay. It was an accident. They happened. We immediately wrapped up my fingers, went and got the wife, says, we're going to the emergency room. Short story, guy stitched me up, did a wonderful job. On the way back, one of the things my wife said was, you're getting a saw stop. Who am I to argue? You're getting a saw stop. Okay. Well, it just so happened I was moving from one company to another, and I sold a bunch of leave back to my old company, and I got a big chunk of change. With that money, I bought this saw. I ordered it from a local dealer, Freeze Beal and Sharp, link in the, de link in the description. Um, it was very costly. I opted for the 3 horsepower 220 volt saw, which probably I'll never ever run something through this that needs that kind of horsepower, but while I was at it, why not? The cool thing about Freeze Beal and Sharp is the, the, the company owner came to my door with a truck and a lift gate with nothing else in his truck on a Saturday, dropped it on the floor and put it right in the middle of the shop where I wanted it with his little wheelie thing, um, right where I wanted it. And off he went and there was my saw in boxes. So no unboxing video, I didn't have a camera back then. So I unboxed the saw and started assembling it. One of the things I found was that, as others have reported, that this saw comes out of the box just about ready to go perfect. I, I actually made no adjustments except for the fence. The right wing fit perfectly. I mean, it's just absolutely, there's no, no warp or bow in it. It was wonderful. The left wing, uh, as most of you know, is a plywood melamine coated piece of uh, material that goes on there for the left wing. More on that later. One flaw I found in the saw when I unpacked it and started assembling it, this bar for the Biesmeyer style fence had a warp in it. So I called SawStop and said, hey, it's got a warp in it. And they said, oh, what's your, what's your name? Okay, we'll send you a new one. Great, you want the, no, no, just throw the old one away. We'll send you a new one. It's coming. About three days, four, five days later it came, dead straight. I finished assembling the saw. The blade was perfectly aligned to the, uh, the uh, slots. The fence was off by uh, me maybe 5 or 10 degrees and I made one adjustment there and I adjusted the tension on the locking handle. Ready to go. It's on a mobile base which I almost never use. Ready to go. You've heard descriptions of by many YouTubers about this, the system that stops the saw. There's a few myths out there too. Let me show you what I keep in my shop, just kind of as a reminder. This was, the, I think, the second time it went off. And in 13 years, it's gone off maybe eight or nine times, and only once has it gone off with my finger touching the blade accidentally. Everything has been, oh, a piece of metal in the wood, or I touched it with a piece of metal when it was, when it was spinning. Um, there's, no, there's no explosive charge in this. There's a fusible link that holds the shoe down against, the, uh, against this part of the, the cartridge. There's a very stiff spring. I mean, this is almost like a uh, stiffer than a valve spring in a car. What happens is, when, when, the, when this gets triggered, 
the fusible link goes off, melts the link, and this thing gets sprung up into the blade. As you can see, the metal shoe, which is aluminum, jams into the blade. The inertia of that action clicks the trunnion off its, off its catch, and the whole thing drops below the blade. That's how that works. As most know, it has a bypass feature if you want to cut metal or wet wood. I'm not going to turn the saw on now because of the noise, but you flip the saw on, you rotate the key, it blinks between the red and the green, red and the green, then it comes to solid green, release the key, the bypass is now set. So you can cut wet wood or metal. If you turn the saw off, the bypass is set back to the normal mode and the cartridge is activated. If you want to cut more stuff, you have to reset the bypass every time you want to cut wet wood or aluminum. That way, the bypass never, ever gets left on. Once you turn the saw off, the bypass is turned off. The manual is a work of art in its own. This is probably the best manual tool manual I've ever had. Spiral bound, it's on cardstock, as one other YouTuber pointed out. It's, it's very detailed, it is very descriptive, and it is easy to understand and follow for anybody. Um, goes through all the steps you need to adjust and align if you have to. It uh, describes how the system works and it shows you actually a diagram of the trunnion carrier and how that drops down when the saw, when the saw goes off. I mean, and as, as people have, no, have noted, this thing stops the blade and drops below the table in about under 10 milliseconds. And if you look at the, the, the YouTube high-speed videos from SawStop and others, you'll see what I mean. I mean, it touches your finger and it's, out, it's gone. It's literally gone. I've made two modifications to the saw. One, in this router table, um, it's all just some parts. There's a link in the description to a video of me building and installing this router table. Number two is uh, that half-inch... Uh, mesh cloth, wire cloth, that I've placed over the dust port, dust collection port. So when the nut falls out of my hand while I'm changing blades, it doesn't go down into the tube and I have to dig it out of the back of the saw. Here's one other little modification I did. It's basically just to the insert plates. Check cartridge shoe gap. There's a story behind that. I just did this in my CNC machine and put some white paint over it so that I don't forget to check that gap because if you don't if you forget to check that gap you may have a problem and that problem is if the shoe is too close to your saw blade or your dado head it could go off spontaneously you gotta get that measurement just correct and the measurement is like 330 seconds or so and it's about the width of a nickel so I have a nickel here I use all the time for for, for setting a gap between the, the blades and the cartridge now I did have it go off with a dado head it was too close to the, uh, to, the, to the saw, to the dado head blade, and um, it didn't drive itself into the dado head because it, wide area, I guess, it, it absorbed a lot of the energy there. So the cartridge was toast, but the dado head came out fine. So I've um, uh, had to replace the, cart the dado cartridge. One piece of advice, this is, I know, this is the dado cartridge. Have a spare cartridge in your shop. I don't have a spare dado cartridge, but I have a spare uh, regular cartridge for the saw in my shop, in a drawer over there. So if it does go off, I can get back to work really quickly. Now, my wife and I have an agreement. Whoever sets it off buys the new cartridge. I bought a few, she's bought two. It also went off once, and that was the only time my finger touched the blade, when the, I turned the saw off and it was winding down. Now, as long as that blade is turning, the system's activated. And so I touched it when it was slowing down. It was pretty slowed down pretty, pretty far. It didn't even nick me. And it went off. But because the blade wasn't turning very fast, there was not a lot of inertia. The motor wasn't turning on, under power. There wasn't a lot of inertia, inertia, so it just banged into the blade, set the cartridge off. When I took it apart, I found that the blade was fine because it was winding down. It wasn't a lot of energy. And, but I had replied to replace the cartridge. So there we are with the cartridges. Uh, I have bought and added stuff to it over time, build things for it. The first thing I built was this outfeed table and a crosscut sled. I used the William Ng method of five cuts to an accurate crosscut sled. Came out really nice. And of course, a, an auxiliary or sacrificial fence 
where I can run rabbits. You can see the cutout already from the dado munching out the bottom of that thing. It has a trough on down, running down the center of it where I can store gear and stuff like that and it locks on the fence with two nylon set screws. Doesn't move. I also replaced the miter gauge that came with the saw with a Craig miter gauge. I love this thing, it's great. Everybody replaces the miter gauge that comes with their saw, just about. Stuck a couple of uh, rare earth magnets down on top of the fence. So I've got the, the height adjustment wrench for the cartridge here, and this is an adjustment wrench for something on the, on the, uh, the uh, router table. As to the performance of the saw, as I said earlier, I've used other high, moderate to high end saws, and this by far beats them all. Take out the safety feature, put it away, don't have it, and this is one of the best saws I've ever used in my life, probably the best saw. I'm not saying that just because I own the damn thing. And it gets used a lot. I mean, I, when I was working for a living, every weekend I was here doing something, and now since I'm retired, I've, I'm in here at least two or three times a week and on the weekends doing some kind of a project. I think this is the only saw I've ever used that had two wrenches, one for the inside of the arbor and one for the arbor nut. I mean, this makes working, getting blades on and off just super, super easy. You don't have to stick a block of wood in to tighten up your nut when you're putting a saw blade or a, or a dado head in there. On the subject of dado heads, so I have the Freud dial a dado dado head for dado stack for doing dados on the machine, dados and rabbits. I have a video on how this thing works and how wonderful it is. Now, this is deeper than any normal stack dado system. It's got more depth this way. So the arbor on this saw is fine for a normal dado stack. If I stack this up to three quarters of an inch, um, the nut goes on about halfway. That's fine. Engineering principle, three threads or more. Got three or more, three or more threads and I can tighten it down. It's not coming off. But it's, it, has, it could be concerning to some people. But I rarely ever use a full three quarters. I'm usually doing a rabbit or a smaller dado or doing some, uh, some, some tenons, which I'm going to be running through the saw going from one side to the other. But I rarely have to put this up to a full three quarters. Um, that's just informational. That's the dial of data. Look at the video. That'll be in the description as well. The three horsepower motor, it doesn't see the wood going through it. I'm using a thin curved blade, of course. It's the only thing that you can use on these because the riving knife is made for a thin curved blade. I put hard maple through it, white oak, red oak, all kinds of hardwoods, and the blade doesn't even know the wood is there. It just right through it. Accurate, unbelievably accurate. 13 years, it's never given me a lick of problems. It's always worked every time I wanted it to. It's functioned perfectly all that time. It, is, it remains aligned without issue. Um, I set it off a few times. It's going to happen, most, but like I said, only one time with a finger and it was winding down when I did that. I really love this saw. I will never own another saw other than a saw stop, and this one should last me the rest of my life. Now this is the equivalent, I think, of today's industrial cabinet saw. The, the motor swing box is over on this side of the saw, whereas the, uh, their, their uh, professional cabinet saw has the motor swing box on this side. So it, it swings this way. Um, I think that's all I need to say about it. I mean. I know there's been controversy about these saws over the years, and that's fine. Debate is good. But safety is uh, equally important. And this is one tool in the shop that I know is going to work and not hurt me. I mean, I've actually had some accidents with power tools in the past, especially in the boat shop, um, that were pretty nasty. I healed from them, but this is one tool I know is going to protect myself and my wife. This is the tool she had to get past in order to come in and do a lot of woodworking. Once she got past this, using this, she was gang, gangbusters learned all the tools. So there we go. Yet another saw stop review. Quick and dirty. 
I love the thing. Um, it's going to go with me wherever we live. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Hit the, hit the like button, subscribe button, and look for notifications, the notification button, and make good things out of wood.